Is this seriously my family? Such a question was forced upon me. Just showing their good side with smiles on their faces, not knowing what they're really thinking. It didn't take long for me to grow to dislike such a family. My name is Samantha, a 28-year-old housewife. I got married a year ago and have been living with my family and my childhood home. This happened due to three reasons. The first is that my father's company went bankrupt and he couldn't find a new job. The second reason is because my older brother Ryan is jobless. Being the eldest son and jobless is unacceptable and it seems like my father is putting all his bets on my husband Alex. Ryan claims to be a YouTuber, and despite him saying that it's his job, from our parents' perspective, nothing has changed. He is just as jobless as before. And the third reason is, my mother has terminal cancer. She was given two years to live. When my marriage was decided, it all happened in quick succession. My father asked my husband Alex to live together. Alex had a close relationship with my father, often drinking together, so he didn't hesitate to agree. Given my mother's situation, I also agreed with the arrangement and was grateful to Alex. I wanted to take care of my parents as much as possible, but after a year of living together since our marriage, I started to get annoyed with my brother Ryan. It's been a while, why are you just a housewife? Even though dad is jobless, isn't it strange that you're not working? Do you realize what's going on with mom? What would happen if I didn't handle the house chores? The laundry and meals for you, Ryan? I am the one doing it. You sound so sarcastic. And yet, you dare to speak to me in such a way. Besides, I work from home. Work from home? Ah, oh, you mean some penny-earning side job. That's not called work. I don't want to hear this from you, Ryan. Go find a real job, got it? I had no reason to be spoken to like that, and it infuriated me. His accusations made me feel as if I were entirely in the wrong, cornering me. When I consulted with Alex, he merely said, He must be stressed, just ignore him, showing no understanding of my situation. I was worried about my mom and was doing everything I could for her, so my brother's behavior only added to my annoyance. I couldn't help but wonder if he even cared about our mom at all. His cold-heartedness seemed apparent. I started to feel more and more stressed. Hey, it seems like my workload is going to increase. If that happens, I won't have any time for myself so I might not be able to go to our usual spa visits. Well, I don't mind that, but it would be a problem if you couldn't handle things at home. After all, we've got to take care of my mother-in-law. I get it. I won't neglect my responsibilities. Do you need some money or something? No, that's not it. But can you come with me for the weekend grocery shopping? If I shop for the whole week at once, I can free up some time for work. You're really determined, huh? All right, we'll drive there. I didn't want to waste time, so I decided to buy a week's worth of groceries on the weekend to avoid multiple shopping trips. Then, an incident occurred. Samantha, you've stolen my money. Suddenly, my husband accused me of theft. I had no idea what he was talking about, let alone what money he was referring to. He had decided that it was me, his face turning beet red with anger. I couldn't understand why he would think it was me. I was the one who should be angry. It's not right to blame others. Was it stolen from your wallet? Don't play dumb. The $3,000 I put in the drawer is gone. $3,000? Yes. Return it now and we'll forget this happened. Hold on. Why am I the one to blame? I didn't even know you were keeping such a large sum in the drawer. But you said you were going to increase your workload recently. I thought it was suspicious. That's... I can't believe you're that kind of woman. No, you're getting it all wrong. Please, believe me. I'm sorry, but I can't trust you anymore. Don't mess with me. Give it back now. 
I said give it back. Enough. If you're going to doubt me that much, then go ahead and doubt. Get out, criminal. I'll leave by the end of today. I lost my temper and retorted harshly. Treated as a criminal by my family, I was driven out of the house. However, the following day, I received a frantic call from my brother Ryan. Mom's in a terrible state. What? As soon as she found out you left, she's been panicking and screaming. You need to come back and calm her down. I won't go back to that house anymore. I'll leave mom in your hands, Ryan. You've never done anything before, so it's about time you stepped up. With a hardened heart, I responded in such a manner. But honestly, I didn't want to do this. I was torn between my pride and my concern for mom. Cut the crap. This is too much for me. She only listens to you, so just come back. Even your husband Alex doesn't know what to do. I don't care. You reap what you sow. I won't go back and I'm getting a divorce. I don't care about that. It doesn't concern me whatever happens to you. If that's the case, you should take mom with you. This is mom and dad's house. Why should I be the one to leave? If someone's leaving, it should be you, Ryan. If you're working, you should be independent. I'm the eldest son. This place is mine. There's no way I'm leaving. You're so shameless. Have you ever considered mom's feelings? She's currently battling an illness. I'll come back, but only if you leave, Ryan. Those are my terms. I can't do that. It's obviously impossible. Stop being so selfish and come back already. Even in such a situation, Ryan was still stubborn and selfish. Meanwhile, Alex hadn't been in touch, and it seems like he had the nerve to continue staying at the house. Perhaps feeling awkward, he'd only come home to sleep and ate all his meals outside. My leaving seemed to have caused the family to fall apart. I didn't realize our family was so fragile. Then, after a month had passed, Alex finally contacted me. Hey, how long are you going to sulk? Get back here already. Your mother-in-law is unmanageable and it's becoming a real issue. I will proceed with a divorce. Once that's settled and you've left, of course I'll come back. You're really thinking about that? Obviously. I've been treated like a criminal and kicked out of my own home. That was just a heated exchange, wasn't it? You doubted your own family. I feel like I felt in life. There was no trust. Don't be childish. It's a fact that the money is gone. Who else could it be but you? It's ridiculous to suspect me without any evidence. Aw, oh, stop your nagging. Give back the money. If you return it, everything will be settled. You're the one being foolish. Enough with the insults. It's a fact that you wanted money at that time. It all adds up. It could have only have been you, criminal. Enough. Want to know why I was trying to earn money? Like I care. You probably wanted to buy some worthless jewelry or something, right? You couldn't wait to get your hands on that money. What's tomorrow? Huh? I can't believe it. You don't even remember your own birthday. Ah, uh, my birthday? Wait, don't tell me. That's right. Just as you guessed, I thought it was about time you got a new suit. And since you said you wanted a custom-made one, I was saving money for it, but it wasn't enough. Fool, you know custom-made suits are expensive and we can't afford it. That's why I wanted to gift it to you so badly. And yet, you accused me of stealing the money, and that hurt me. Wait a minute. I didn't know. Forgive me. It's not something to get so angry about, right? I can't forgive you. The most important thing is missing, so it's over. I'm sorry, but all I can think of is divorce. That's why I've asked a lawyer to handle it. Huh? An attorney? Stop that. I want to settle this quickly and go back to my mom's. I don't want to. I won't get a divorce. And I won't leave this house. We're supposed to inherit this house. Huh? My decision to divorce was further cemented by the fact that Alex's attitude hadn't changed. If Alex continues with this mindset, the divorce is likely to get messy. However, I remained unshaken. 
As I was thinking about all this, my brother reached out to me again. Samantha, cut it out. You need to come back now. No way. Why did you keep quiet? What? Mom spilled the beans. She said you've been paying the mortgage on this house. Moreover, you've been covering all the living expenses too. Ah, isn't it strange that you didn't know about it? An odd job wouldn't be enough to cover the expenses. But we can't pay the mortgage. What are you talking about? You have a job, but you haven't put a single cent into the house. You should be the one to pay it. Well, yes, but I bought a computer. A high-end one. It was expensive. What? You bought a computer? Because I needed it for my job. What else could I do? Oh, so you're making enough to buy such a thing? Then you should be able to pay the house mortgage, right? I told you I can't pay. Your husband isn't contributing to the living expenses either. What's going on? Until now, I've been covering those with my money. But now that Alex is eating out every meal, there's no spare money. So what are we supposed to do? Hurry up and figure something out. If we don't pay the mortgage here, we'll have nowhere to live. What about mom and dad? I had reached the end of my patience with my brother's selfish thinking. Just stop it already. Who cares about your video game streaming? You have less than 100 subscribers. The number of views is in the single digits. You won't make any money that way. Nobody watches it because it's not interesting. How, how do you know that? I just searched for video game streaming and it came right up. Wearing a mask and sunglasses doesn't make you unrecognizable. How did you buy a computer with that? Don't tell me you. I didn't steal any money from your husband. How do you know about that? Something's fishy. Well, um, that's right. I overheard you two talking. What? Nobody was at home when we had this big argument. You were out, which is unusual for you. That's a misunderstanding. You got the dates wrong. It's a mix-up. Stop messing around. You're the one who stole it, right? If you don't confess, I'm going to file a police report. Well, wait. A police report? No, no, no. No, please stop. I just found some money and I... I just borrowed it. I swear I'll pay it back. Don't give me that crap. I will never forgive you. Get out of my house now. I'll be back home tomorrow and if you're not gone by then, I'm calling the cops. Don't say things like that. We're siblings. We're family. Can't things just stay the way they've always been? Don't try to smooth talk your way out of this. I will never forgive you. Just remember that. Leave before I get back tomorrow. You've been warned. Don't make decisions without me. I'm your elder brother. Cut me some slack, please. Without responding to my brother, I just hung up the phone. It seems like he kept calling like a madman after that. But I turned my phone off and ignored all of it. The next day in the morning, I returned home. I'm home. My mother rushed to greet me. Mom. You're back. I'm so glad. I never realized just how important you are to us, Samantha. I'm so sorry. Hold on. It's not your fault, Mom. As we were talking in the living room, my brother Ryan emerged from his room. And then he uttered unbelievable words. So you finally came back. Here's the details for the loan repayment. Make sure to transfer it today. Also, I've got a tab running at the delivery place, so you can take care of that too. It's your fault for running off like this. Reflect on your actions. What the hell are you talking about? Stop messing around. I told you to leave. I will call the cops. You're throwing your life away over just $3,000. What? $3,000? Don't tell me you... Don't whine just because I borrowed a little. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Big deal? You steal my money then say I'm making a big deal? That's not right, is it? Can I get it back? I don't remember lending it to you. You, living here on my generosity, shouldn't be so bold. We're family. It's okay, right? No, it's not okay. Give it back. Are you sure you want to go on like this? You might not be able to live here anymore. Seeing Alex and my brother arguing, my father stood up. No way, my mild-mannered father? 
Enough. Both of you get out. This house, it's my house. And currently, it's Samantha who's paying the mortgage. I won't give it to anyone. I may be the eldest son of this house, but why is my sister taking over? You're only the eldest son in name. What have you done? You've been a shut-in, playing games all the time. You never got a job, just living off the money I earned, right? You're over 40. Grow up. Get out. That's too much. Isn't it cruel to tell a man with no money to leave? I've been saying this for a long time. This isn't a new issue. You could sell that computer you have. You're not even working. What? what wh wait a minute. When I say get out, get out. That goes for you too. What? But I haven't done anything. Haven't done anything? Who drove Samantha out, treating her like a criminal? A marriage is built on trust. Once it's broken, it's impossible to stay a family. I'm sorry, I apologize. But the one who stole was your son Ryan, wasn't it? Don't blame just me. You got close to me, pretending to be friends, planning to inherit all of my assets, right? The moment I lost my job when the company went bankrupt, you treated me coldly. Because I'm a poor father with no money, right? How terrible. What a horrible person. I don't want to see your face. Now get out. Don't mess with me. I was stunned by my father's words. Perhaps the sudden action of my father was the result of him reaching his limit. The divorce with Alex was successfully processed and it ended abruptly. It felt refreshing as I thought it would be more complicated. But after that, Alex contacted me multiple times. Apparently, the reason for our divorce had become the talk of his workplace. And he couldn't stand it, so he quit. He needs to realize that relying on other people's money won't get him anywhere. And my brother seems to be living in poverty working a cleaning job at the station. A late employment indeed. As for me, I have no choice but to do my best, hoping for my mother to live as long as possible. Our family is restarting with the three of us, and our bright home life has returned.